Hey, welcome back to the Drawing Database. Again, it's Professor Mark Leone, and today we have and are going to explore the drawings with, for 15 minutes of Edgar Degas, French uh, impress, Impressionist artist, very well known, obviously, uh, born in 1834 and died in 1917. So very nice long career. And so we'll take a look at some, uh, many of his um, well-known drawings, but, but some that you, you may or may not have seen. So we'll get a, get a good, good overview of what, what uh, he's done. Um, obviously, Degas liked to draw quite a bit of horse rider, also polo scenes. We have a horse here, an earlier, more academic study, longer pose study, and I love the uh, stumped quality, so he takes the cardboard stumped uh, material here, right, and then he puts down a graphite tone. Here, this is probably graphite on the horse. Did a lot of these when he was younger. And then he takes the stump and he blends blends that by rubbing, rubbing on uh, the uh, surface. You can kind of see it here, the line quality there. Right, and then the stumping through here. And then if you go close enough, this is not a high enough JPEG image, but you do get some uh, contouring line. We'll do this, and we'll do a long pose or two. I'll do this upcoming at some point um, where we, we do a more French kind of uh, atelier, 19th, 18th, 19th century uh, idea where we use uh, maybe the idea of ongre, and we'll do a line drawing uh, like, like this foot here, and then we'll do the stumped the hoof, hoof coming in there, and then we'll stump it nice with the tone, and then we'll come back over uh, with the with the uh, cross contour line. But a beautiful, beautiful controlled study, relatively flat pose with the profile view of a horse. Another Degas uh, academic study when he was uh, in his youth, probably late teenage, maybe early early twenty years but not too much older than that. Here we have a beautiful head study, and we have that same technique where we have the, graph, the graphite tone. You can see it here in almost its pristine state with just stump. So he lays down probably a smooth uh, uh, tone, and then he stumps over it to, uh, to blend it. Maybe I can, we can kind of do it like that, see how I can smudge that. And then he blends that with the cardboard uh, stumping tool or even his finger right, and then uh, he goes back and adds a more darker tone and builds it up that way, and then we get a little bit of stroking pattern in the head. But gorgeous study of a upturned uh, male head, very difficult pose to hold in. Here's kind of the structure. If you want to take a look at that, then coming over with the upturned uh, chin here. There it goes, my pencil. And through there, we have the center line here, and then we have the eye line, bottom of the nose, bottom of the lip, center of the mouth, and that kind of thing. And then lovely eyes. Let me get that, that red line or two off that. And we have the lovely upturned eyes looking upward, and then the beautiful highlights erased out in those eyes. Really, really lovely study. So I focused more on, uh, in the beginning here, many of Degas' earlier studies. This wasn't one, as I believe, when he was a young man and went to Rome for, I believe, about three years. Lucky him to study. Degas was very, very from a very, very wealthy family. He studied law for a while until he, he realized he was going to buck his family's tradition and be an artist. And thank goodness the world has that because we have uh, an ec excellent example of French Parisian life in the 19, middle late 19th century, thanks to Degas and Impressionism. So we have a beautiful academic study, again, in, in graphite, stumped graphite. I, I see the influence of the neoclassicist Poussin, as well as Ongra, and so we have that very line kind of quality that's drawn with graphite, very delicate, and then the very meticulous uh, laying down of the material the graphite and then stumped and smoothed out and blended pretty pretty well and then he goes back and draws over that. So if you're stumping, which is fine, don't leave it just blended. You're going to need to render back into it, otherwise it's going to be a, a little bit of a light kind of immaturish mess. So you still need to think in three dimensionality, etc. But there's a lot of great things going. We have two multiple headshots here. Um, could be from a statue or a painting or a, from a live figure. And then lastly, we'll, we'll take on uh, a few more academic studies here of, of Degas. The, uh, the nude study here from uh, a model, I'm sure, and then also the studies, I think, again, in Rome, equestrian writers, they could be from uh, statues, 
Uh, very neo, again, neoclassical style. Remember, remember this. We'll, we'll see where Degas starts, right? And then we're going to find out where he ends up and finishes with his, his life before he goes just about completely uh, blind. And you're going to see this, this very youthful Degas, neoclassical, beautiful kind of academic study. Love the gesture to keep that alive within the model. Both of these are graphite. We see the Raphael kind of neoclassical. Even though he was a, a Renaissance artist, we see that this kind of idea and David neoclassical kind of idea figures coming over. Um, in through, so we give a little bit of that gesture. And then the graphite laid down stump. And in this one, you can see more of the cross hatched and hatched kind of line. We'll do this later on. It's going to take a while to get there. These are very long kind of term drawings to do because they're so delicate. But the beautiful control of the lat here and the anatomy, the scapula uh, uh, coming across in through there, the deltoid and and so on and so forth, and of course the leg and the feet, the simplified foot, and then through there. So they also harken back a little bit uh, to the um, bark plates uh, as well. So I think that's that's something else to um, I think that's a G the bark Charles bark plates as well. So if you haven't seen those with sight sizing, you should see those. I don't think Degas was a sight sizer, but I think he was aware of the bark plates. Lovely study of a uh, virtuoso violin player, very gestural quality in charcoal, probably in, in very soft charcoal, charcoal stick. I love the changing of the hands to figure out the position that they want. You can take the multiple violin changes in through there. Don't be afraid to be looser later on uh, with your drawing, um, especially as you get through the figure section with me. It's a little tighter and academic. We'll loosen that up some. I love the quality, probably done from life. Fairly quickly notice the cross contouring lines across there. Notice the figures lit from the top right. So we see the light source, uh, mostly the, the, the head mostly in shadow on this side and, and just a little bit of light uh, over, low, over through here. And so we get this, you know, very well shadowed figure. I'm surprised he doesn't put him in shadow here in the, in the uh, chest area, but he might have been uh, sitting in light. And you can see how his gesture works uh, very well. This is what makes Degas Degas. So remember where he started out as an academic uh, classicist in a way, studying Poussin, studying the, the um, Renaissance and neoclassicism with David and and certainly Romanticism, and now winding up, turning away from historical painting and portraits of family to focus on French Parisian life, ballets, the orchestra, a certainly bourgeois uh, existence and certainly a privileged insight into that society. Ballet was certainly a major theme, uh, uh, young ladies dancing and practicing, and here we see that. Here we see a focused composition in this strong diagonal, even with the cast shadows up, breaking up the vertical all the way back over. And of course, they tilt his back to lean his back to get to these verticals, to get to, to get to this opening. And I love the open door passage in there of some, some, some sort. Notice how gestural and how impressionistic. So the paintings were equaling the drawings in terms of its execution, style, technique, and um, the kind of uh, style for the times. I think it kind of, in my opinion, echoed in future Italian futurism with a faster industrial paced revolu uh, uh, industrial revolution to now be mirrored by the um, the art of Degas. Look how open and free this is, and compare that to some of the images that we just saw from his academic uh, youth. A pair of dance, or excuse me, a pair of singers singing. Uh, opening up the uh, vocal cords and the diaphragm and the obviously the chest area to uh, sing could be the same singer in different poses and I like the fact you know we see this one now a little bit more of the flesh tone hair the pastel in through here the beautiful gesture of the opening of the hands probably done very quickly from life with charcoal on paper gestured in the hands you don't have to draw every single uh, detail of every single uh, part of the body. We really want to see the focus on the face. I love this little divot and the mouth coming up and in through there. I'll take that away so we can see that. And then the, the gesturing of a lot of that around around the model makes 
makes quite a bit of sense as well. Uh, and of course the focus back on her, her lapel, the open chest, a little bit of the sternocleidomastoid in the, the sternum, and this lovely gesture that comes down with her beautiful cafe dancer, uh, cafe singer singing um, in what could be an open concert or maybe somewhere in a cafe coffee house. This is more of an unusual study for Degas when I found this one. Of course, it's framed. We see that. Um, not that that's unusual, but this is on a kind of a green toned paper here with, in graphite and, and kind of uh, very quickly laid in. I love the, uh, the uh, bold, robust sort of contour lines. Um, he's got them in very direct kind of lining with enough, enough dark around and underneath the, uh, the neck and the, hand, the arm and the back and around to give a little cast shadow and then these lovely highlights of this glistening uh, satiny, velvety kind of uh, texture that he gets on the face and, but, but mostly on the, the, the uh, ballerina leotard dresses that work quite well, a little smudging too as well. Lovely, lovely ballerinas. Woman at the bath or at her uh, intimate bedside being attended to by probably a maid uh, or a servant having her hair combed after probably a long uh, cleansing bath. And here we see impressionism in drawing and pastel at full force. Uh, we see the staccato marks of the pastel like you would see in painting. So if you think about Monet, uh, Manet uh, certainly, and uh, Pissarro as well as uh, Degas, uh, you can think of, um, and even Seurat, uh, you see the, the great control of value, of color, uh, the beautiful brown mauve tones, this beautiful carpeted floor. Look at all the cross-hatched tonality, the, the rug that's starting to, or the, the bath cloth, that's starting to flatten out in through here and become more shape-oriented and less uh, detailed and less 3D and a little bit more 2D and, and flatter. It really starts to echo in Cezanne, who will come around soon and begin to turn the art world um, into a new direction. Beautiful uh, coarse shadow and, and also uh, re reflected light and this beautiful fleshy pouching that she gets as she grabs her uh, oblique side. Beautiful controlled, not too heavy highlights and just the overall beautiful color, coloration. Staccato meaning, you know, short jabs of uh, uh, fresh color, saturated color, then slightly blended and, and stock cut staccato back on. Now we have the woman at the bath, so a beautiful bending over study in soft, natural uh, light. This is probably done from mostly memory, if not from an earlier uh, pose that he uh, quickly drafted the model into. But we see this beautiful kind of gesture coming down. Look at the curve coming back over, and of course we get through there. And then what's revolutionary about this composition is, yeah, this real strong break of the table, and we have the pitcher sitting on top in perfect perspective, but it's this jutting, this dividing. So we have about three quarters of the composition here and about a quarter here that's revolutionary, and that started to come from two things, from the invention of photography in the 1870s, I believe, somewhere around there, maybe even earlier than that, but uh, photo and then Japanese prints from Japanese artists as, as these impressionists, as, as, uh, just like uh, America Sun and Bert, Bert Marisol were looking at uh, flattening, and this was happening also with Degas. So we get that kind of beautiful compositional structure that we see there. I'll take that off. Look at the beautiful control of anatomy through the spine, curvature of the buttock coming down, just a little bit of that split in this beautiful, subtle, supple breast form overlap here by the, now the oblique in through there, buttock coming around and ever just a lovely study. Color galore, the, the copper pots read so well, but yet are, yet are simplified in their uh, rendering, but yet still evoke um, a nature. It's, it's, it's easy to see why the Impressionists are as popular as ever, not only at Sotheby's and auction houses, but also um, at just your everyday art connoisseur and those who are or not or amateur still have some some hold and love from Monet certainly because their themes were mostly beauty for the most part and it tends to hold um, most people. And lastly we couldn't get through a Degas section without these beautiful dancers. Probably at the height of his 
To me, his drawing impressionist power was this beautiful blue, the blue dancers. Uh, it doesn't probably get any better in terms of drawing and impressionism for Degas, I think, than this image. The, the, uh, the, this, this figure especially, right? I'll isolate her for a moment. The beautiful, putting her in shadow except for the shoulders, but this mixing of color in through here, the staccato patterning around her shoulder form, this blue reflected light coming up, and there's just a very um, uh, staccato, almost splotchy way he puts color on as he was starting to lose his eyesight, unfortunately. And maybe that, by losing his eyesight somewhat, it gave us even more to ponder over and enjoy and to look at. So it's a heavily, heavily layered pastel drawing. He liked, to my knowledge, he liked to use a fixative that the French developed. Um, if you haven't been to Paris and been to the little Signolet uh, store there, not too far from the Louvre, um, please do. I've met the owner and he's a wonderful man. He also speaks English because the French are fantastic, as they know, and I love the French. My wife is, I lived in Paris, so I must say that, but I, I certainly agree. But uh, the French, I believe, helped to develop fixative. And if you don't know what fixative is, it seals a drawing um, from itself. It binds it to the paper and, and coats it with a little uh, uh, misty resin. The only thing with that, once you're done, you when you want to go back and draw, you cannot erase. You'll be drawing back on a, a slight surface, but you can build up like a painting. And that's what he does. He builds this up. He builds up color, then he fixes it, builds up some more color, so we get, color, so we get this beautiful layering of many layers of blues and violet light blues and oranges and pinks that that in terms of color harmony are um, for the for the 19th century early 20th is, is really un, unparalleled I think is a tour de force here by by Degas he was one of my favorites when I was a young man in my teens right out of high school I kind of fell in love with Degas for a while and, and still find his work um, captivating you guys take care I'll see you next time on the drawing database Bye-bye.